Good morning, everybody. You might notice that I seem to be in a different locale today. And I am so grateful to announce that today is the first live in-person class at the Cancer Support Community. Between you and me, I don't actually have anybody live here with me because people just didn't get it and they didn't sign up. But, but... Uh, on the 12th of August, because we still do the classes two times a month, the second and fourth Thursdays, I think. So on the 12th of August is the next class. And if you're interested in learning Tai Chi Cha live rather than online, please come. Just call the Cancer Support Community, tell them you want to be here, and then just show up. It's going to be awesome. But I'll continue to teach uh, on the live stream as, as long as uh, we want to, you know, as long as we think that it's necessary which is probably forever. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'm Jessica Lewis. <laughs> I always forget to introduce myself. And it's funny being out here because I hear critters running up and down <laughs> the awning and all kinds of stuff. So I'm Jessica Lewis. Uh, I am a lifestyle coach. That's a fancy way of saying that I am a master personal trainer and a certified nutritional counselor and an accredited Tai Chi Cha instructor, and that's why I'm here today and every time that I teach at the Cancer Support Community, uh, because it's been my experience, both personally and in working with umpteen clients over these going on 18 years, that you can eat right and exercise exactly the way I tell you to until you turn blue in the face, but unless you find a way to relax, you can still kiss your health goodbye. <laughs> and but, but it's also true that for most people, just sitting down with the intent to empty the mind is sometimes uh, almost like giving the monkey up there permission to run amok. So one thing I love about Tai Chi Cha, which is one of uh, the three styles of Tai Chi I'm certified to teach, but clearly my favorite, is that <clears throat> it has been qualified as a moving mindfulness practice by several of our most important medical authorities. So it's an easy way to get exactly into that same mindful state as good old fashioned seated mindfulness. But to my way of thinking, it's a heck of a lot more fun. <laughs> so without much further ado, let's get down to it. Oh, I do want to tell you where to reach me if you want to know more. I have on my company shirt today. <clears throat> so the name of my company is Sculpt your life. You can Google me if you want. I know that I'll pop up first. I've been told that's true. I'm actually a registered trademark, by the way. Um, but if you go looking for my website, I spelled it a little bit differently because frankly, almost 18 years ago when I get, went to get the domain, Sculpt Your Life spelled the way you'd expect it to be spelled was already taken. So here it is. www. It's down here. Sculpt, S-C-U-L-P-T, U-R-L-I-F-E dot com. But again, if you Google Lewis and Sculpt Your Life, I, I can almost guarantee you I'm the first person or organization that's going to pop up. And you can learn so much more about me and all the different things that I do on my website. Very robust, organic, constantly growing, big, nice website. But let's first begin by just sort of getting in touch with the various sensations of the body. I do like to do a few minutes of good old fashioned mindfulness before and after I teach just because, you know what, sometimes it's difficult to tell how stressed out you're feeling. But if you really take the time to look with your mind's eye inside your inner landscape, you will notice whether or not you're stressed or tense or in pain, or angry, or thirsty, or hungry, or whatever. So let's do that. Find a comfortable position for your feet, preferably with your heels a little closer than your toes. That's sort of like a V-shape, you know. Uh, whatever's most comfortable for you is fine. And then let your knees be soft enough. Maybe spongy is a better word. Let them be spongy enough that you can really feel your weight spreading out across the soles of both your feet. Let's go ahead and figure that out now. So, 
I found my sweet spot. Have you found your sweet spot? Yeah. Okay, the hands. I've got something in this hand, but you can see what I'm talking about in the other hand. Um, so just let your arms hang down from your shoulder sockets. That That's easy, right? Should be easy. And then simply imagine that you've got like little marionette strings attached to each one of your five fingers on both your hands and someone lifted your fingers. Lifted your fingers. And you might notice that the easiest way to maintain this position with your arms is to have a little softness in your elbow. Okay, so we've got some spongy knees, soft spongy elbows, and maybe even visualize that you're resting your palms on sort of that invisible cushion of energy between them and the floor. All right, we know from physics we're actually swimming through a sea of energy at all times. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So just notice that cushion of energy between your palms and the floor. See if you maybe even feel it. Feel it in your palms, okay? We're just going to hang out here for a few moments. <sighs> and begin to notice the various sensations inside the body. Physical sensations are sort of like feelings, you know, emotional feelings. We're all entitled to have whatever sensations we have, and really none are more important than the others. They just are, right? And notice the sensations. And now I want you to pick a spot somewhere in your inner landscape to really focus your attention on, if you can. Preferably a spot you normally never pay any attention to or pay very little attention to. A good example would be your breathing or the sensation of your feet touching the floor or maybe that sensation of the hands resting on that cushion of energy. Just pick a spot. We're going to call the bell. That is a fancy way of saying I'm going to ring it three times in quick succession. <clears throat> And your whole job until you hear me ringing the bell again is just let your attention dwell on that spot that you have picked. And if your mind wanders, that is completely normal. That's what minds do. Just invite it back and it, it will probably comply. Okay, so here we go. So welcome back, in case you went anywhere. <laughs> I have this wonderful aunt, Aunt Frances. She was so open-minded and interesting. And uh, at the age of 87, she finally gave up practicing yoga. And I said, why, Aunt Frances, why did you stop? And she goes, I found myself leaving my body. And at this age, I thought perhaps it wasn't a wise idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And forgive me, I need to take a little swig of water because I hear, I feel a little frog in my throat and it's just going to get worse. So let me just grab that. <clears throat> By the way, one of the reasons why Tai Chi improves your health is because it very effectively mixes the fire in your body which in Chinese medicine we consider to be governed by the heart, and the water in the body, which in Chinese medicine we, we uh, think of is governed by the kidneys. Often in Chinese medicine, actually in most of the ancient medicines, 
when there is a disease present, the water has overwhelmed the fire. Uh, actually, if you think about it, when people are overweight, when they're carrying extra baggage, they often have cellulite. And if you look closely at uh, cellulitic tissue, you'll notice that it's mostly water trapped in this sort of um, spongy adipose tissue. <laughs> it's so interesting. So one of the ways that Tai Chi makes you well, and we could talk about this forever, is that it helps really mix up very efficiently and in a very balanced way, the heart fire and the kidney water. So many people find that they start to become thirsty when they practice Tai Chi is because the fire is burning up the water. It's so interesting. So maybe that's why I had a frog in my throat. Anyway, let's begin. We're going to find ourselves in that comfortable rest position once again <clears throat> that you were using for your mindfulness a moment ago. Just feel your body at rest. Feel your feet touching the floor. Feel your hands resting on that cushion of energy. And we're going to step out with this leg. And the easiest way to do that, because the best way to do Tai Chi is with the effort of no effort, by the way, is just send your weight a little bit more into this leg. And then you can step out with complete effortlessness. Right? Now straighten out your toes. Now send your weight backwards, and that's just a lengthening of the knees and placing the hands back here. And look, my toes are so light right now. All my weights and my heels, I can actually wiggle my toes. I bet you feel the same way when you're in this position. And now we're just going to begin to rock forward and back. And rocking forward and back and this is called rocking motion it's considered sort of a warm-up movement to all the rest of the practice <clears throat> it's funny because when I'm doing this movement I don't really feel like I'm rocking I feel like I'm gliding forward back a little bit up in the back and then down and forward and a little bit up in the front but my hands are making this arc shape here. I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Notice the arc shape. You can even sort of see a little energetic trail my fingers are leaving. You notice that? So this shape that the fingers are tracing reminds me of the runners on my grandma's rocking chair. And when I think about that, I start to think about what if my feet were suddenly magically runner shaped also? It makes this whole rocking motion so much easier. Because you know how when you get all the way to the front of the runner, the rear naturally peels itself off the floor? And then the reverse is true. If you doubt me, just sit your butt down in an old fashioned rocking chair and notice what happens when you rock. The backs of the runners lift up. The fronts of the runners lift up. And you just glide. Nice. Now because this is considered a warm up, we can do a ton of rocking motions. Most of the Tai Chi Chub movements are done in series of nine. Sometimes it's three sets, and usually the three sets will add up to nine reps altogether. But for rocking motion, I know a lot of Tai Chi Cha instructors that really enjoy doing like 27, 36, or more rocking motions before they even be able to begin to count to nine. So let's just do three more. Remember, the best way to do Tai Chi Cha is with the effort of no effort. Let's do one more full one here. And on this last one, we're going to end by heading back the way we came. So just sort of glide to the side at the same time you come a little bit up. And then simply let the body float back down into that rest position. Just 
Just take a moment to feel your feet touching the floor. And let's set up the next movement. The next movement is called Bird Flaps Its Wings. I'm without my props today, by the way, it's because we have a little breeze and they would be blowing all over the place. Now we're simply going to allow the body to both sink and shift to the front. And that will cause the sort of energetic heart we have in the bottom of our torso called the Dantian to expand. And the hands will have to get out of the way for it. So here we go. Nice. I'll show you from the side. Huh. Now this time, when the little bird wings flap out, we're going to draw a circle just with the tips of the wings right here. And then we're going to flow back together just like we already have done. That was one set of three. We're going to do two more sets of three. Here we go. Here comes the circle. Now if you find you have to adjust the angle of your feet in order for your knees to track out directly over your toes, please do. The best, the other best way to do Tai Chi Cha is with no pain. <laughs> Here comes the circle. And float back down to rest. Nice. All right, now we're going to do a whole bunch of forward-backward moves. So I'm going to coach you how to do it from the side. I think you're going to see a little bit better what I'm talking about if I stay sideways. All right, so from here, you're going to sink down a little lower. You might even feel your tailbone tucking under a little bit more. And then you're going to shift all the way into your right leg. Ah, I actually sunk down a little lower when that happened. And then when all of your weight, I mean... 99.9999999% of your weight is literally stacked on top of your right foot. Only then do I want you to extend your left leg. And you can do that because it's completely empty. This should be an effortless thing. Here we go. <laughs> Sound effects not included, right? And then just imagine you have a big round platter, like about heart height right out in front of your body, you're going to put your hands at the back of the platter. You can, If you like, you can even imagine you have a little ball of energy under each hand, and the balls are actually on the platter. So as we glide forward, we're going to let all the weight that's currently residing in this back leg pour into the front leg. This one will become weightless. This one will become loaded. The hands are going to move out around the platter over the outstretched leg and back towards the back leg. So here we go. Nice. Now you see how circularly the hands are moving here? Of course, because they're moving around a round platter, right? <laughs> this ain't rocket science. But I want you to apply that same principle of circularity to the weight shift because it really is a continuous motion, or it can be. We're just gliding forward, and without stopping, we're changing directions, and we're gliding back, and without stopping, we're changing directions and gliding forward again. This is kind of like waves washing up on a beach. They wash up. And at some point, they turn around and wash back. And at some point, they turn around and they wash up again. And we're going to do one more. I think this will be number nine. And then all the weight's in the back leg. So we're just going to stand up. And it's going to cause everything to rise. And then just let the whole body float back down into rest. OK? Let's do the other side. Here we go. Sinking down, shifting over to the left now, extending the right leg, and here we go. Now, since you're looking at me from the side, you're probably noticing that at one point my front toe leaves the ground and now my heel. But remember, this practice is best done with the effort of no effort. 
So I absolutely promise you, I am not using muscles to get the heel or the toe off the ground. I'm literally pouring the weight from the rear leg into the front leg until the rear leg is empty and elongated. And then I'm pouring all the weight back into the back leg until the front leg is empty and elongated. The heel leaving the ground and the toe leaving the ground is just because the leg has become completely empty. And this is nine. So we're simply going to stand up and float down. And now let's do a movement that's got a slight variation to the one we just did. It's called around the platter variation. Here we go. We're going to sink down. We're shifting over to your right. I mirror when I face the camera, by the way. Extending the empty weightless left leg. The hands are going to come back up to the back of the platter and they're going to start to move but just in front of the shoulder on the same side as the outstretched leg. The variation occurs and it's simply a question of lifting the fingers until there's sort of like a little energetic ball between the hands and then just showing the ball the front edge of the platter and let it drop off the edge by itself. It's sort of like showing one of your troubles the door and letting it walk out by itself. If we push too hard against something difficult, it might hang in there, right? We're going to do just one more. I think this will be nine. Then we're going to float up and float down to rest for just a moment. And now the other side. Hi. Here we go. There's a slight variation of the good old around the platter movement. Feel the body literally gliding forward and without stopping, just turning around and gliding back. Let's do two more. Nice. Last one. And just stand up on the rear leg and allow the body to float back down to rest. Just pause long enough to feel your body at rest. And let's move on to bass drum. Sinking down, shifting over to your right leg so your empty left leg can extend. And here we go. Feel the fingers trailing around the outside rim of a big old-fashioned high school marching band bass drum. Maybe it's strapped to your shoulders. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see a different view. Nice. Feel the circularity of the drum. And see if you can allow your weight shift to be just as circuitous as this. Let's do two more. Last one. <sighs> Other side. You saw me switch feet when I changed directions. You didn't need to do that. I just, I mirror when I face a camera. And then when I turn sideways, I don't. That's just a habit. But here's the thing. There's really no such thing as bad Tai Chi Cha. It's all good and it just keeps getting gooder. <laughs> and uh, 
If you get your lefts and rights confused, I'm pretty sure no Tai Chi Cha police are going to come and take you away. <laughs> so don't worry about it, especially in the age of COVID and Zoom. Good heavens. Depending on how you have your camera and your Zoom room set up or your Facebook live stream, you know, things might look exactly opposite from the way they are. This is our last one. It's a great way to go through life, though. It's all good, and it just keeps getting gooder. All right, now we're going to do a couple of movements that are actually closely related. There's only 20 Tai Chi Chan movements altogether, and one thing I love about this practice, a particular style of Tai Chi, is that there's no rule in the rule book that you have to know or do all 20, and you don't even have to do them in order. But I am kind of doing them in order. There is one rule, though, uh, in the rule book about that. If you do one of the moves I'm about to show you, you have to do the other. And if you do, like, six, daughter on the mountaintops, you should do six, daughter in the valleys. If you do nine, whatever. So we're going to do six and six, because we're going to save a little time here. Let's sink down and shift all the way over to your right leg so your empty left leg can extend. And the palms are just going to turn over at the bottom. And then as you flow forward, the hands are going to come up as if they're going to clap, but then they somehow miss each other. And they simply fall. Doesn't it almost look like I'm unzipping my jacket? If I had a little pull in each hand, you could actually see me doing it. But in reality, my fingers are just tracing two overlapping circles. You see it? It's like two of the four rings and an Audi logo. We're going to do just one more. And we're going to stand up and float down. And we're going to do the other side. Nice. Now here's the funny thing about Daughter on the Mountaintop. No matter which foot is out, uh, we don't change the hand positions. So if you want it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme. I think this is number six, so we're going to call this the last one. Floating up, floating down, taking time to feel the body at rest, at peace, rooted, touching the earth. And now we're going to do daughter in the valley. The hands start here, just like bass drum only out, and here we go. Ah, doesn't it look like I'm zipping the jacket back up now? You see it? Zip. Yeah. Nice. Nice. We're going to have one more. We've got so much bird song out here today. It's lovely. Feel the feet touching the floor. And here we go. Nice. Great. Boy, I really like being outside. We're going to do one more. And we're going to rise up and float down. Feeling the, thought, the body and the feet at rest upon the earth. Ah. And you know what we know from physics, for every pound of square inch, every pound per square inch that we're pushing down into the ground, the ground is pushing that much back up against us. So feel yourself held up, even when you're just standing there, almost as supportively as if you were sitting in a chair. It's a very comforting feeling. Let's do 
the last two forward backward movements before we move on to some of the side to side so we're going to sink down shift into your right leg the hands are going to rise to in front of the shoulders and now we're doing something called push pull <sighs> I'm going to turn sideways there because I want you to see. You might be able to see my Don Tien, which is that energetic heart between the groin and the belly button, and about halfway between the front and the back of you, expanding and contracting. And it's actually pushing the hands out and pulling them back. I believe this one is number six, so we're going to call it the last one. Then simply float up and float down. And let's do the other side. You might also notice that in all these movements, there's at least one body part drawing circles in the air. This is no exception, just a slightly mushed circle, more like an ellipse. Down and up, and turning around and falling, and turning around and going forward. It's very continuous. And we're going to do one more. Floating up and floating down. taking a moment to feel the body at rest and let's do pulling in the energy the last purely forward backward move here we go sinking down and shifting to your right in order to extend the empty left leg hands under the platter this time same gesture as around the platter only the hands underneath Now this is an extremely energizing movement. We have a visualization that goes along with this. Imagine energy from the most distant star you can possibly fathom flowing into every little corner of your body through each one of your fingertips. Let's do one more. and other side. This is a very powerful movement, especially within the context of people dealing with cancer or people who are caregivers for those with cancer. There's so many people in the world that are simply hardwired to give, 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 and they simply don't allow themselves the luxury of taking the way they give. This is a great opportunity to really receive. Let's do one more. <sighs> nice. Now the reason why I cut some of our forward backward movements down from nine to six is because I often feel like I'm short shifting the second half of the practice in order to stay within the time constraints of the live stream. So I want to make sure that I give you full, I give those movements full attention. Let's do uh, carry the ball to the side, actually. It's the first side to side movement. I'm going to change it a little bit for this format so that I don't step off the view of the camera, or if you're doing this with me, so you don't step out uh, of a place where you can see me. On, on the stream. Okay, so here we go. We're going to sink and shift, but also turn the upper body a little bit towards the right. And that will cause all the weight in your body basically to hover over your right foot. And that's what reminds you to put your hands up here on the right. Now this, your left leg should be so empty, just let it sneak away from the body. Heel first. And now we're simply going to pour all the weight into the left leg and back into the right. It's literally like we're pouring water from one glass into another as smoothly and evenly as you can. And now on this third one we're just going to stand up on the filling up leg and sink down. 
Now normally we would do that exact same movement, three rotation step, three rotation step, but again in order to save space we're going to just go back the other way. So here we go. Sink, shift, and turn to your left, and here we go. By the way, let the weight shift, just pull the hands along for the ride. There's less for you to do. It makes it the effort of no effort, right? Let's do the whole thing again. This is one of those movements that's three sets of three. Which adds up to nine. Nine's a magic number in all ancient cultures. Did you ever notice that? In fact, you really don't have to drill down very far before you see how all the ancient medicinal and meditative practices and even ancient religions, they all have an awful lot in common. More in common than not in common, actually. And one more time, we're going to do another set. And you know, that's because all the ancient medicinal practices, they didn't have MRIs and x-ray machines and all these fancy gadgets we've got. All they had was their holy men or medicinal practitioners ability to tap into the sick person's natural ability to get well. And that whole process is kind of halfway between medicine and spirituality which is different from going to church. It's a different thing. All these practices, yoga, tai chi, they're very deeply spiritual. They put you in touch with aspects of yourself that sometimes you simply forget to notice. Right? Kind of like, people are kind of like the ocean in the middle of a class 5 hurricane. You know? All hell is breaking loose on the surface. But if you go down just a little bit under the surface, even in the middle of the worst storm possible, it's very deep and quiet down there and endless, timeless, connected to everything. There's like no limit down there, right? And there's actually no difference between those crashing goofy waves and the deep dark de depths. There's no difference. And we know that because if you spill water in the ocean, it doesn't just stay in the spot where you spilled it. It goes everywhere. If you spill oil, I should say, in the ocean, it doesn't just stay in the spot you spilled it. It goes everywhere, right? Anyway, no more preaching, right? Let's do passing clouds, which is so closely related to um, uh, carry the ball to the side. Same movement, only the arms are moving independently. Okay, and we're going to do it, uh, we're going to sort of do it one hand at a time and then blend it all together. So here we go. Sink, shift, and turn to your left. And that causes the left hand to rise. We're just going to leave this hand here. Let your empty right leg move out to the side. And as we glide that direction, it pulls the left hand along for the ride. Let's just do a couple of rotations like this. You already know how to do this. I'm just reminding you how to do it. Now you're going to let this hand rest and when we move over to the other side we're going to let the right hand come into play and let's go back. Again, you already know how to do this. I'm just reminding you how to let your hands move independently of each other. Now let this rest and when you go back to the left we're going to begin again. Only now as you glide back towards your left it's going to pull the right arm in. There you go. Nice. Love this move. Pretty much everybody loves this move. Let's do two more sets. Last set. And we're going to end by moving 
back the direction we came from, feeling the body at rest right now. Feel your feet touching the ground. Let's move right on to another one of the really perpetual motion type movements. This one's called perpetual motion taffy. Okay, we're going to do it one hand at a time at first till you get the hang of it. And then we'll add the second hand in. Did you see me? I, s I sank, I shifted, and I turned to your right. And that caused, I should put my foot back here, that caused your left shoulder to come forward. And it just, that's a signal to put the left arm across your belly. Let your empty left leg go out to the side. And here we go. We're shifting. And as we turn that direction, it pulls the other arm across the belly. Now it is true that one heel and then the other is actually leaving the ground, but I'm not using muscles. You just turn away from the trailing leg and it will actually peel itself off the ground. And then the other way. Is, again, this is just like waves on a beach. At some point, you change directions and just start heading back the other way. All right, we're going to do one more like this. And now guess what? We're going to add the second arm. Okay, so here we go. And if you get your arms and legs confused, so what? In the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Just see if you can fall into the flow. Flow with me. I like to think of the word flow as an acronym for following love over worry. Let's do one more set. Ah, nice. Let's do another one of the really continuous flowing movements. This one is called working the pulley. We're going to sink down and shift over to your right leg. When you do that, you can very easily extend your left leg with no effort. Since your left leg is out, raise the left hand to in front of your shoulder, and the right hand is just going to face the sky. Okay? You probably already figured out, we're going to exchange the weight from the rear leg into the front leg and flow forward at the same time. You probably also figured out this hand is going to go forward also. But here's the difference. When you're flowing forward and this hand is coming forward, you're going to turn your upper body away from it. And look, you can already see what happens to this shoulder and elbow when I do that, because my elbow just disappeared behind me, right? So that turning away from the forward advancing hand enables this hand to get back behind you and do all kinds of cool things back here without any effort. Okay, It's effort for the tree, but it's not effort for me. <laughs> I keep brushing the, the fronds of the fern. So here we go. We're going to flow forward. And then as we flow back, the other arm will come forward. Whichever leg you're flowing into, that's the arm that's advancing forward. This is really a lot like swimming, but not through water. We're not cutting through the water with effort. We're just flowing through that slightly viscous sea of energy that we normally walk through all day long with no awareness. So if that's like thick gooey air, like the thickest fog you've ever encountered, just imagine that unless you utterly relax, especially your wrists and palms and fingers, it's going to be harder work for your arms. Just let the chi flow through your fingers, through that relaxed 
hand gesture you've got going on here. It's just flowing through your fingers. This is going to be our ninth one. We're going to call it nine and we're going to stop here. We're just going to flow back to rest the easiest way possible. And now let's do the other side. Nice. Now the reason why this is called working the pulley though is it's almost like there's two old-fashioned clothes lines one on either side of your body and the pulleys there's two in front of each shoulder and two behind each shoulder that being said you can almost see the fingers kind of running along the strings that attach them you see that and then they just roll around the pulley and then they run along the straightaways. Let's do one more. <sighs> Floating down to the soles of the feet. Nice. Let's do a couple of very simple but wonderful moves, okay? We're going to do light at the top of the head, light at the temple. It's a combo move. And then joyous breath, and we'll see how much time we have after that. So here we go. We're going to just simply sink down, scoop up some chi, bring it all the way up to the top of the head. And then we're just going to simply sink and rise. And sink and rise one more time. Now we're going to mix up our own energy with the cosmic soup up there <laughs> above our heads for about six seconds. It's like we're pulling our energy up and out and kind of mixing it around with the cosmic consciousness. And then we're going to hold our hands steady for the same length of time. You might even feel a very pleasant buzzing between your hands up here. And then we're going to sink and rise again. Sink and rise one more time. Fold the energy in on yourself. And let's do the second half of that movement. We're bringing the energy up to the temples. And here we go, sinking and rising. Look how we're just simply shifting to the rear and contracting and then shifting to the front and kind of expanding. One more time. Good. Mix forward. It's like you're messing up your hair at the temple line here. And then hold. And then sink and rise and sink and rise and sink all the way around fold the energy in sink back down to the soles of the feet ah let's do joyous breath i'm going to turn a little bit sideways to you we begin of course from this resting position that we've come to identify as ours between each movement and you're going to step out with your left leg so we're just going to let a little extra weight ooze into the right so you can step out with no effort and then just turn the toes forward we're going to sink down as we exhale, exhale all the air out of the lungs through our noses with our lips closed and we're going to make a special kind of almost yogic breath uh, it's like it's like you're going to clean your glasses <sighs> before you wipe them, only with your lips closed. This is what it sounds like. So here we go. Let's do it. And then we're going to rise as we come to the balls of the feet. Turn the palms over. And now we're going to push down as if we're pushing with uh, some effort against something soft, like pushing a pillow into a box that's not quite big enough for it in four chunks. <laughs> Again. <laughs> One more time. <sighs> 
Now you can do joyous breath anytime you need a little extra energy. It's both very grounding and very energizing at the same time. But here's the other little rule about doesn't matter what order you do Tai Chi Cha in. If you do light at the top of the head, light at the temple, you must always follow it up with joyous breath. That's the only rule about that. Now we're actually going to go back to one of the pulling taffy moves. There's a sort of a hybrid move that's a combination of a lot of the up and down stuff we just did with pulling taffy. And here's how it goes. Let's just do the up and down part. We're just going to shift back and down, shift up and forward, back and down, up and forward. Now let the fingers do the same. Down and then they come up and forward just like you do. We're going to do that a couple more times just so you get the hang of it. So on this one you go down with the fingertips come up and then you just wind up for taffy and pull to your left. We call this wrist circles taffy. Let's do a couple more sets. I did end up short shifting the second half of the series a little bit. There's only so many minutes in the hour, right? I do tend to talk a lot. I should probably join that organization Over Talkers Anonymous. <laughs> I'm probably a founding member. But I always like to give a lot of information. I could probably talk for another hour or two all about this stuff. <laughs> There's so much to say. I do teach some wonderful classes though throughout the area, both online and live. Let's do one last one. If you go to my website, go to the classes tab, you'll see all about it. Or just head over to my YouTube channel. Feel the feet touching the floor. Here's one last variation of pulling taffy that's both a side to side and a forward backward movement. Here we go. Since we're already turned to your right, when the empty foot goes out, it goes forward and turned to the right. So we're going to glide forward first and then back. And then we're going to glide to your left just like we normally would. One of my oldest friends from childhood always jokes around about how, Jessica, you don't teach Tai Chi Cha, you teach Tai Chi Cha Cha Cha. <laughs> and this is the one movement in which my friend Marilyn is absolutely accurate. It's kind of like the slowest, most mindful Cha Cha. There's a forward back and a side to side and then a forward back and a side to side. We call this anchor taffy. And the reason why is because when we do this forward back thing, this is the only forward back movement in which the rear heel stays anchored down. We don't go quite as far forward as we do in all the other forward backward moves. Let's do one more set. Floating up and floating down. And I think we'll end today by doing regular old good old fashioned pulling taffy. It's actually the most basic version of all these different variations we've done. It's funny how I taught it last. We're going to skip over six healing sounds. That one, just so much more information I could tell you than in 10 seconds. Uh, so let's go ahead and do regular taffy. It's just like perpetual motion taffy, only we pause in between the repetitions. So here we go. Nice. 
And you've already learned to do it this way because I've shown you all the other variations and they have pauses between the reps. Feel how as you turn to your right, your left arm comes across your belly and you just top it off with the right arm. Now your right arm crosses your belly, you top it off with the left and pet a cat from the head all the way down to the tail. That's how you get a nice long energetic pull. Maybe you can feel the silky fur of the cat running between your hands. That's so nice and silky, soft. Let's do one more. Nice. So I guess I lied. We're actually going to finish up with one more movement. It's not a movement, it's pose. I'm going to take off my sandals though. It's a lot easier to do cosmic consciousness pose with no shoes on. Okay, so feel the body at rest. Simply lift up the left heel, rotate it slightly and lay it down very lightly on the right ankle. So I haven't actually shifted my weight. I just lifted up one heel and placed it down. Then let your arms rise up. I don't ever mirror this movement because we only do it on one side and it feels too bizarre to do it on the opposite. So the arms rise up to about shoulder height. The fingertips overlap. The left ones are the ones closer to the body than the right. Now remember, we always say that this is an effort of no effort practice. So if this feels like work for you, I just suggest that you imagine you are resting your forearms on a cushion of energy between them and the ground. And we're just going to hang out here for a moment and feel the body at rest. Just be where your feet are. And then we're going to flow back to the soles of the feet. And let's spend just a few more minutes doing a little more mindfulness. I just want you to have the experience of noticing, I almost bet you, almost guarantee you, that even if you didn't know what the heck you were doing today and felt clueless, you are more relaxed now than you were at the beginning. So let's check in with our inner landscape with our mind's eye. Okay. Find your comfortable spot in which you can really feel your feet touching the ground. If you want, lift your fingers so you're resting your palms on that energetic cushion. Find a spot to focus on. Focus your attention on. And let's begin. So again, I'm Jessica Lewis, and the name of my company is Sculpt Your Life. I'm always so happy to be here at the Cancer Support Community week after week. Thank you to everyone who tune in week after week after week. We get a lot of views on this live stream. So grateful to all of you. And consider coming live. Uh, again, I think we said it was the 12th of August. Uh, rewind. Back to the beginning, I gave you a date that I know was accurate. I'm not sure I'm accurate now. We're, we're here every second and, and fourth Thursdays, okay? It's gorgeous out here. It's cool. It's breezy. It's shady. I think even on a hot day, it's going to be great. And I hope to see you again. Take good care. Bye-bye.